So Jennifer, give me five different ways to cook a potato. Um... Leprechauns, true or false? Okay, last one. Give me three ways to know you've got a good pint of Guinness. Um... Hi guys, it's me again, Jen. If you're new here, I am a Filipino living in Ireland and I am sharing some of my stories here in my YouTube channel. And yes, the year has finally come. It's now midway to my fifth year here in Ireland and I know that you know what's coming. Isn't it amazing that in a few months time, I'll be able to apply for my Irish citizenship? Today, we're going to talk about how I am preparing for it and no, it's never too early to prepare for something as important as this. I don't know if you remember, but in one of my very first videos here on YouTube, I actually mentioned that this is one of the many things that I love about Ireland, that they allow non-citizens to be citizens after a period of time. Obviously, they don't just hand out citizenships to basically anyone. It's a thorough, lengthy and document-intensive process. So the earlier you prepare for it, the better placed you will be at the time that you can apply. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five tips to make your application smooth sailing. But before we move on to that, you might be wondering why I wanna be Irish. And to answer that, did you know that 49% of the countries across the globe allow dual citizenship? Uh-huh, I think you guessed it right. Ireland and the Philippines are two of those countries. Some of the countries that do not allow it would be Singapore, Netherlands, India, Japan, and so on. The list is very long. That's why I'm extremely grateful that I won't have that dilemma to pick either because I don't think it's going to be easy to let go of my Filipino citizenship. Proud to be Filipino. And by the way, did you know that people with dual citizenships are called bipatrides? So yeah, I'm going to be a bipatride. The main reason why I want to be Irish is because I love traveling. I want to see the world. And with Irish passport, I'll be able to travel to 147 countries visa-free compared to the 38 countries with my Philippine passport. So imagine that's 109 countries more without the hassle of applying for a tourist visa, let alone the costs of applying for those. So it's definitely a whole new world. Also, there will be more career opportunities within the European Union and as well as the European economic area. So there's really a lot to this, you know. And now, the five things that I wish I knew earlier in the process, and I'm going to go through it based on complexity, from minimum to maximum. Number one, you need to be a social butterfly until you have three very good Irish friends. And that's because in this application, you'll need three Irish references. <laughs> Kidding aside, I don't think it's going to be very difficult for you to find friends here because I find Irish people to be so warm and welcoming. So as long as you're genuine, this is going to be a walk in the park. Number two, you'll need to prove a couple of things. The first one is that you are who you say you are. And the second one is that you've been living in the state lawfully. So those are the two categories and under each one of them, you will have a list of documents that you can provide as proof. And each of those documents will be equivalent to a specific number of points. Now you need to remember that this application follows a point system wherein you need to have 150 points per year to be successful. Now let's start with the easier one, the proof of your identity. If you have a valid passport, then that's already 150 points. You need nothing else. However, if for some reason your passport is expired, you can still submit that, but it will have lower points. And because of that, you'll need to provide additional documents like IRP or a driver's license or a PPS card, to name a few. To establish that you've been lawfully living in the state, there are a number of documents that you can provide. And the biggest one of them would be the P60 or the income tax statement, which is garnering 70 points. And if you've been an employee since you got here, this is going to be straightforward because for sure you're going to have your revenue account and you can download it there so quickly. 
And then another document you can provide is your bank statements. So that's an easy 50 points. And with those two documents, you already have 120 points. So just 30 points more and you're set for the year. The next best document that you can provide would be a rental agreement. But note though that this agreement needs to be registered to the Tenancy Board of Ireland. Otherwise, it wouldn't be sufficient and you're not going to get your 50 points. Now, this might be straightforward for most people because obviously if you're moving to a new location, a new country, you'll be renting out an apartment or a house. You just need to make sure that your tenancy agreement is in order so you won't have any problems when the day comes. Now, this might not be the case for some people. Say they're living with their friends, their family or their partners so they won't necessarily have a tenancy agreement every year and if that's your case then the next document that you can provide would be credit card statements which are also 50 points unlike in the u.s here in ireland it's not very prevalent like people still prefer using the debit cards and cash now, personally, I still think that having a credit card would be useful in some instances and you can definitely maximize the benefits and rewards if you pick the right credit card and the right bank for you. And now knowing that credit card statements have 50 points, then you might consider getting one. Note though that you need to have at least three transactions every month for this to be sufficient. Now, some people might not fancy credit cards and that's understandable. The last document that's worth 50 points is the doctor's or hospital's record. So if you've been to the doctor or the hospital, then gather the documents and you can provide that as proof. Those are the five big ticket documents. The P60, bank statements, rental agreement, credit card statements, and doctor or hospital's records. There are also other documents on the list that have lower number of points. For example, car and the property tax, which are both worth 25 points. And then the electricity bill, your car insurance, medical insurance, TV license, but they are all worth 10 points. My suggestion is to focus on those big ticket items so that you'll be providing less number of documents. Number three, a common misconception about this requirement is that you need to input the passport stamps that you get when you're going out of Ireland and coming in Ireland. So that's not correct because what this calculator requires from you are the Garda stamps in black ink, which are the stamps that you get when you are applying for your IRP or the Irish Residence Permit, also the previously known as the GNIB. And you'll notice that this stamp will have the start and the end dates that you're going to input in the calculator. And you'll see that the calculator then will automatically count the number of days and tells you right away if you've achieved the requirement. So if you're diligent enough in renewing your IRP, then this shouldn't be a problem at all. Otherwise, the skips in the days in between your stamps will not count towards the number of days in your reckonable residence. And obviously that will extend the number of days until you can apply for your Irish citizenship and we don't want that. Actually, at the moment, I'm still trying to figure out what's gonna happen in my situation. It's a funny one because during the pandemic, my passport expired, although it was extended for another year. And my IRP also expired. So I need to talk to the immigration officer and just figure out how that's gonna work. I don't think I'm the only person who experienced that. So I'm going to provide some updates in my YouTube channel. Number four, should you apply the minute you see these two green checks? No. <laughs> there is another variable that you need to check before you apply, and that's the number of days that you are outside of Ireland. There's this thing called the six-week rule, which means that if you leave Ireland for six weeks, you're still considered a resident. But anything beyond that, beyond the six weeks, will then be deducted from the number of days that you see on the results of your residency calculator. For more clarity, let's have an example. Say year one, two, three, and four, you're outside of Ireland less than six weeks. Grand. 
And then for some reason, on the fifth year, you're outside for 10 weeks. So that will mean then that four weeks will be deducted from your number of days. For example, your calculator shows 1,850 days. That will be deducted with 28 days, which is seven days times four weeks. And that's going to give you 1,822 days. See, so initially you might think that you're already eligible, but actually you're not. So you need to be careful about this. Now you might be wondering how the state is going to get this information. So in the form, in section 5.6, they ask you if you've been outside Ireland for more than six weeks in any of the five years. Now, if you answer yes, you'll be required to provide the information on a separate spreadsheet. And that's where you're going to put how many weeks and the reason for such. Hmm. You might be thinking, it's too manual. Maybe I can just put nine weeks instead of 10 weeks and no one's gonna know. You're dead wrong because they know and you'll be providing them your current and previous passports in full. And in this form, always remember to be as accurate and honest as possible. Knowing that you need to know how many days you're outside of Ireland, I highly suggest that as early as now, start noting all of the days that you're outside of Ireland. Because I'm telling you, if you travel so much, it's going to be a nightmare trying to accumulate all this information for five years all at once. So start putting them on a piece of paper or an Excel file or your iPhone, wherever, as long as you have them and keep track on a timely manner. Just a little bit of background on this. Back in 2018, there was a case that caused a lot of stir about this requirement. So there was an Australian man who got refused for a naturalization certificate because he was outside of Ireland for 97 days on the year of his application. So that's almost 14 weeks. That's eight weeks more than the allowed, you know, six week rule which is a lot, right? So you kind of understand why it was refused. However, there was a high court ruling mentioning that the continuous 365 days meant that you cannot go outside of Ireland even just for one day, which is ridiculous on the face of it. Like what if your work requires you to travel or there's an emergency? It is actually indirectly restricting applicants to visit their home country for a full year. Obviously, there was a lot of backlash on this ruling. Deloitte, for example, was one organization who seek clarification of this ruling. And I can guess why. As a previous auditor myself, I know that the nature of the work is traveling, going to the client, to the site, to perform your work. Now, if their employees will refuse to travel abroad because of the citizenship requirement, then it's definitely going to impact the delivery of their work. But the good thing is that ruling was overturned by the Court of Appeals, declaring that it is unworkable and rigid. So this gives the minister more flexibility in deciding whether to approve an application or not. The moral of the story, the six week rule is an information that's good to know and to follow and that the minister can still consider approving an application even though that rule has been broken. Maybe a couple more proof that this is allowed. First, I have a friend who reached out to the Philippine Honorary Consul, John Ferris, and he was actually so nice to give some more explanation on this requirement. He mentioned that the continuous period referred in that requirement refers to the dates of your residence permit, not the days that you are physically in Ireland. So as long as your working permit is unbroken on the fifth year, then you're good to go. You're safe. Secondly, I know some people who was granted citizenship even though they were outside of Ireland for a number of days on their fifth year. Those are the five main points that I wanted you to know, but I got a bonus for you. The cost of the whole application. The application fee itself is 175 euros. And if you're successful, 
you will pay a statutory certification fee of up to 950 euros. So in total, that's going to be 1,125, which honestly I find quite reasonable, especially that will be in exchange for a whole new world and whole new opportunities for you. There might also be some, you know, small expenses like printing and solicitor's fee, because there's a couple of documents that need to be certified as true copy. By a solicitor and that's the copies of your passport and your birth certificate if you find this amount quite significant then the earlier you save for it then the better before i end this video i just have a couple of final reminders one is that the list of requirements are not static they are subject to change, so you need to keep an eye out if new updates become available. And secondly, the citizenship application process is quite sophisticated. It is imperative that you read the 20 page document laying out all the details about the requirements. I'm gonna put the link on the description box below for your reference. And that's it guys. If you found this video useful, then I'd appreciate if you like this video and leave some comments below. Now, I mentioned earlier that I'll be providing some updates on this whole process in this channel, so please don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next video. Ciao! Ooh la la. Hello. Wow, it's so warm here. Do you want it here? No, 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 just upstairs. Okay. <laughs> I'll be there soon. Oh, it's recording.